house of God. Uh, and I want to just remind you of that. Uh, he says judgment must first start in the house of the Lord. Yes. And I'm praying that there be a great stirring that takes place inside of the house of God. I'm reminded, and I uh, don't know if this is with this subject or not, but I am very reminded of something that was told to me years ago by a Baptist pastor that he told me, he said, there'll come a day and a time that, that preachers will be hard to find. And I forgot the other day of how many they said in the assembly of God, how many pastors that they need. This ain't only the assembly of God, it's across denominational lines that pastors are getting fewer and fewer, proclaimers of the gospel becoming fewer and fewer, less and less. So it really brings me back to what he had told me about. He says there may be a one day that there's a famine in the land just for the word of God. That was his words. And every time I look around, I think about that. And even though we have some today who is preaching, uh, some of it is just some stuff that's, I think Paul would, would label it as fable tales. We need preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm praying for a spiritual waking, a spiritual revival in this nation. I also want asking you, if you would, to please pray for this ministry here. Lift it up in your prayers. And uh, please remember me and my wife in your prayers. I want you to call our name out. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about call them out to the Lord. Pray for Stacy and Dawn. Please lift us up. If you would in your prayers. Amen. I do want to share something before I get into this tonight. Uh, because I, I got up the other morning. I went to see my brother's doing well. He told me. I called him on the phone. He went through six or five to six hours surgery Tuesday. They gave him a rest Wednesday. He was back in surgery six to seven hours on Thursday. He broke his back some time ago. He's been walking over. He walked almost over with his head down to about his waist. And uh, he'd been like this for some time. And there were some things that took place there. They really had to get him halfway straightened back up before they could even do any surgery and get some things even with the muscles in his back. But I find I was in the hospital with him Thursday, and he was in surgery uh, I know they come in, got him at 6.30, and at 6 o'clock, he was still not back in the room. I was in Birmingham at UAB, and uh, asked the nurse, I said, when's he going, when y'all going to get him back? They said, sir, we can't even promise we're going to get him back in the room tonight. He's in recovery, and he's, he's trying to get his pain under control. I talked to him yesterday. you got to remember, if you've never met Double Double G, you won't forget him when you do meet him. Will they? They won't forget him when they do meet him. Double G was walking over, so far bent over. And I called. Finally, I got a hold to him last night. And when I did, he told me, he says, listen, I've been, have had me knocked out. And uh, with tears, I could hear the tears in his eyes and his voice. He says, Stacy, I looked in the mirror today. And they've got me standing straight back up. He says, I can't believe it. He said, I'm standing straight back up. I want if you would to continue to pray uh, for my brother. His name is Garrett Gaston. Now you know where the double G comes from. This past week, I probably shared with y'all this. I didn't know all the details and everything that's been going on. And uh, I'm not going to share a whole lot, but this, this guy has been uh, part of my life now for the last six to nine months and he came there and started working with me some and I was able to share the gospel with him we talk about it I bought him a bible and all this and and was talking with him the other day a couple months ago probably a maybe a month ago I was talking to him and uh man he's really he said I, I said just read the gospels he called me back three or four days later he said I done read all four of the gospels he said, where do I go to from here? I said, read the book of Romans. 
in a couple of days, he called me back. He says, I done read the book of Romans. Where do I go to from here? I said, read the book of Galatians. He read the book of Galatians. He says, where do I go to from here? I said, go back to Romans. And we was out there talking a couple weeks ago. I said, man, you just need to come to a place that you confess Christ as Lord. Accept him. I said, God's dealing with you. And I won't forget that day we were sitting on the front porch probably about 5 30 in the morning. He says, I want to do this. And me and him sat there and talked. I said, this is a decision you've got to make and make from your heart. But it was Friday. Uh, me and him was going to go and make a, had to run to, to Hope Hall to uh, carry off a, uh, a shipment of supplies to be shipped off. So he gets to ride with me, and he says, I'm back on the book of Romans. He says, I'm trying to figure out. He said, the Lord stopped me. He said, I don't understand some of this terminology. He says, I run across a word that said atonement. I said, I'm not going to get out. I'm just going to explain this a little bit to you, but you're going to have to dig into this. And as this man sitting here talking to me, he says, Stacy, you don't know me very well. You don't know where I come from. But he, that day he pulled his sleeve up and across his wrist, he had a place where he had slid his wrist. He said, I've tried to commit suicide several times. And right there where he had split his wrist, there was the number 666. He says, Stacy, you don't know much about me. He said, but the gospel that you've shared with me has changed my life. He pulled up his breeches leg, and on the calf of his leg, he had witchcraft written across it. And he sat down and looked at me. He said, I feel so embarrassed and shameful to even show you this. I said, let me go ahead and tell you right now. I says, he said, I, maybe I need to get it covered up. Maybe I need to hide it. I said, that is a badge that you should wear that where God has brought you from. The power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, it's powerful. It's powerful. And we have the honor to share in this gospel. We have the commission to share this gospel. That it ought to be anchored into the heart of every believer. Redeemed man and woman of God. To know the simplicity of the gospel. Because that is where the power of God is at. We have been commissioned to carry this gospel into all the world and make disciples. Me and you. Not just me. God is wanting to use you to be a carrier of the gospel. And we're just here to be used of the Lord. And I think that we need to make sure that we take this calling upon our lives seriously. I was on the way Tuesday morning going to, to Birmingham. Now, but just, listen, I just arrived to Birmingham early, might have Thursday morning. I left the house at 3.30. And if you're going to go to Birmingham, leave at 3.30. Because if you leave any later, when you get to Birmingham, you're not going to like it. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, I need to be where I'm going to be at by 6 o'clock. I said, half the people ain't got up yet. But once they get up, I said, it is pandemonium up here. And I don't know about any of y'all, but I turned my radio off Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday morning. I'm praying, God, what is it that you would just have me to do? What is it, God? What is this direction for my life? And I just began to pray, God, open up doors for me to be able to, to proclaim the gospel into avenues that has not heard the gospel. Lord, I want to preach the gospel outside of four walls of a church. Lord, just open these doors up. The gospel is a powerful 
is powerful. Let me say this one more time. I said the gospel is powerful. And it was not meant to be contained. But it was meant to be released. And this is where the power begins to move at. It's like a seed. The power of the seed begins to happen when it's planted. And he's called us to be a carrier of the gospel. May we be stirred up in our spirit. May there be a passion and a zeal within us. May there be an urgency that lies within us to share this power that we call the gospel. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 22, in verses 1 through 10, I want to share with you here for a moment, if you would allow me, the faithfulness to the call. Faithfulness to the call of that which God has called us to. And that is just simply a carrier, a proclaimer of the gospel. This gospel message that I'm justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the atonement of Jesus Christ, I have been reconciled. And so in the book of Matthew in chapter 22, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. He sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. And again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which were bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their way. One to his farm and another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully. And they slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth or angry and sent forth armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their cities. Then saith he to the servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways. He's talking to some more guys that's sending out. And this is what he's calling them to do. He says, Go therefore into the highways. And as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went into the highways and they gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Let me go ahead and read the next couple of verses. And when the king came to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he, he was speechless. Then then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I want to speak to you this afternoon just for a minute on being faithful to the call of that which God has commissioned us to do. I am when you find you're going to find this in these first several verses in chapter in verses three and verses four, five, six, nine, and ten. It's going to begin to describe the ones that were bidden to go. We also going to look something. And I just want to share this because in First Corinthians in chapter four and verse two, he said, "Moreover, it's required in a steward, steward that a man be found faithful." Uh, In light of the term steward, it's a reference not to money or material possessions, but to the gospel. We are to be stewards of the gospel that has been placed into our hands. I must know how to handle the gospel. It's very, very precious. Uh, Handle the doctrine and manage the precious thing that he's placed in. Into our hands. If I am planning on to go into the highways and the hedges. If I am planning to go into the good places and the bad places. I must be a good steward 
of the gospel. Because it is the gospel that has the power. It is the gospel that is doing the work. Let me go back. Let me relieve you of a little pressure off of you. I said it is the gospel that is doing the work. I like what he says, and you've heard me repeat this many a time, that the, that it, that the power of salvation is in the gospel. He, Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The dynamite power of God. They used to use dynamite for fishing. Any of y'all ever heard the stories? When you've got dynamite that you're fishing with, you don't need electronics. You don't need to know what kind of bait. You don't even have to know right where the fish is at. What is going on here? The dynamite's what does the work. All I've got to do is get the dynamite into the water. Just get the dynamite to where the fish are at. In other words, it don't have to know anything about nothing else. I don't even have to know anything about fishing or even how to bait the hook. All I need to know about is how to get the dynamite into where the fish are at. Why? Because the dynamite is what does the work. And I want to just take some pressure off of you because the gospel is what does the work. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Faithful to the call. Faithful to what he has called us to do. There was something here, and I don't want to get into the gist of this message, this whole uh, parable here. But there's a couple of things that popped out of my mind. And one thing was the faithfulness of these servants that he had sent out. Faithfulness of the servants. Let me say this this afternoon. God did not call you to be successful. He called you to be faithful. And some, some people will deem people's faithfulness according to their success. But that is not a right evaluation of that person. Uh, the, the faithfulness is just simply doing that which God has called me to do. And we find out here that he sends out some servants. And he sent forth them servants that were, and he, they told him, said, go out. He said, I want you to tell people to come unto the wedding." I'm about to throw a feast. I don't know if the thing I get in my mind is they have some invitations. They're having the gospel in their hand and, and they're going out and they're inviting people to come to the wedding. Come to the feast that the king is about to throw. Oh, we're going to have a time. And they went. They went out into the, out into the streets and dealt with the people and was handing out invitations to them. But no one accepted the invitation. No one would come. Oh, some people would look at these servants and say, you have not been successful at what you're doing. They would say, I beg to pardon you. We have been very successful at what we was called to do. Our job was to send the invitation. It wasn't our job for them to reject it or to receive it. That is in the hand of the hero. So they was very faithful at what they done. There just wasn't a whole lot of people that responded to it. But it did not reflect their faithfulness. They were faithful. And I want to share this with you this afternoon. Don't you get so disturbed and so uh, been out of shape because you're not seeing no evidence. Hey, your job is just to be faithful of sharing the message. Getting the invitation out. So we find out here that when we look at them, they just simply went out, and but none would come. He sent other servants out and says, I want you to go out. He, there's one group. I see one group going out, but nothing's happened. He says, I'm going to send another group out. But go out and tell them I have prepared my dinner. All oh, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. All things are ready. All I can see is a big old spread. I don't know about you. Let me stop here just one moment. Probably one of the most frustrating things that I've ever done in my life was go out and we was going to have us a big old crawfish boil. 
crawfish and shrimp, potatoes and all these fixings. I reckon the thing that I'm sharing here when I went to crawfish and shrimp, it takes some money. Anybody know what I mean? And man, we having it all, man. I, we having this. And I'm going out inviting people. Would you come? All my friends, hey, man, we, we just come to the house. You don't, it ain't going to cost you nothing. We just like to hang out. I'll pay you to come and hang out with me. Feed your crawfish and shrimp. We're just going to hang out. I went and got me one of them, uh, what, I think my grandmama or granddaddy called it one of them number one wash tubs. Anybody know what I mean? I, I mean, we got through, we just poured it all in there. And we had coolers that just full of drinks and Dr. Peppers and Cokes. I just get whatever you want. I was so disappointed to have so much invested in this, but to have very few that heeded the invitation. It was over. I said, my Lord, we can't eat all of this. And all I could see was dollar signs. <laughs> You're not with me. You get yourself in this picture because I can see that this this master has sent out his servants and tell them, says, I've got the fatted calves, I've got the oxen, I've got it all prepared. When we've spent so much, we got so much invested in this. So much money and so much time. And they, yet they sent these servants out. Oh man, do we have a message now. I, I see them as they left their house, they left their home. Man, we got a message that we got now. Oh, the first ones that went out said we got the invitation. But the next ones that went out began to tell them, say, hey, the dinner is about to be served. And man, you ought to see the spread that the master has. The money that he's got invested in it. Oh, man, they've had the barbecue grill fired up for a while now. You can smell it for miles around. Oh, surely we've got a message now that would entice the people to come. And they went out into the street. And yet when they came back, two things happened. They turned down the invitation. And it says there, but they made light of it. Some of that were there that heard it and heard the invitation that the servants had. They just made light of it. We've got better things to do. I am going to go back to my house. I'm going back to my farm, one would say. The other would say, I've got to get back to my business. And they went on about their way. But that's not the end of it. There were a few that did not depart. But now something has happened to them. There was a remnant that was left. The rest of them says, hey, we just don't have time for it. But there was a remnant there that was still left there. You would might be with thinking maybe they're going to accept the invitation, but they don't even accept it. As a matter of fact, they engage with the ones who had the invitation. And they begin to entreat them spitefully. And they martyred them. When you look back at them, we would have to ask this question. Because when you look now at the marriage feast and look at the servants, you would say, well, the servants didn't do too good of a job at what they was called to do. Their servants done exactly what they was called to do. They was faithful in what they were called to do. Even though there was not any results that took place, they was faithful to that which the master had entrusted to them. I know that sometimes it can be discouraging. But sometimes we need to look beyond that. All of your job is is to be faithful to the one who has sent you out. Are you still with me? So now we look at these guys. Nothing's happened so far. We don't have no guest. They done sent two crews out. No guest. 
And matter of fact, we don't have the same number that we had in our crew as we started with it because some of them has been martyred. They had rejected the call. Let me stop here just one second because I want to give you a little idea about the investment that was in this dinner. Because this is just a parable that has been spoken. I myself had shared you a little bit about having some financial investment into something and nobody show up. But I can't imagine what it would be like that the one that has called the people to the wedding feast that had invested the life of his son and yet nobody pays attention to it. The high price, the value that was placed there. This is a passage, a parable that you can really look at the nation of Israel of what God had done for them and they rejected him. They slew him, crucified him. They're getting ready for a wedding though. I like it here. He grabs one more group of people. So far, we've not seen much results, but the faithfulness has been there to carry the gospel from the servants that were there. Am I making sense here? Do you see this picture? They went out, no one accepted, but they done their job. When you move on a little bit further, he says this. Let me go to verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was angry. And he sent out forth his enemies and destroyed those murders and burned up their cities. Then saith he to the servants, all oh, the one carrying the invitation. The wedding is ready. <laughs> but they which were bidden were not worthy. They rejected it, turned it down. I like this. He tells them, servants, take that same invitation. Take this same invitation. He says, I want you to go into the highways. Oh, my. I want you to go into the highways and the byways, the slums and the ghettos. Go wherever you can go. He said, I want you to find as many as you can find. And I want you to bid them to come unto the marriage. Yes. These guys began to go out. Those servants went into the highways and they gathered together as many as they found. Everybody they came upon said, let me tell you, oh, the master of the house is going to have a feast. He's got everything ready. He's got the lamb. He's got the oxen. He's got the fatlings. It's all been prepared. All he is waiting on for is for you to come. Oh, he, the, the gospel going out, declaring it. It's going out to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Is anybody with me? It's going out to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, what in the world is taking place? He says, I'm going to have some people at my feast. Go get them. When you look at the third group that was went out, when you find out that when they, where they went to and the response that they got, it does not by no means belittle the first two groups. Oh, is anybody with me? Because if we look at the last group, we would say, well, they were the ones that were faithful. No, all three were faithful. All three were a part of God's plan. Just as you are. I don't know what the results are happening in your life. I don't know what is taking place. That's not our decision. Our, uh, our duty and our faithfulness is to share the gospel. That let the gospel do the work. He called you to be faithful to that calling. Man. When I seen this. 
As I thought that my spirit got stirred within the inside of me. Lord, where you sin, we will go. A lot of times we will look around. I'm not going there. They won't respond. It's not my duty whether they respond or not. My duty is to be faithful to the calling. Going into the highways and byways and declaring the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. We are to be persistent in the delivery of the gospel. Amen. This is what we're called to do. Being faithful to the call. Amen. I wonder if you would stand to your feet here this afternoon. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I want to do this this afternoon. You don't have to move from where you're at. I want to encourage you that you be stirred up. That there be a stirring. That there be a, that flame would be fanned. Fan that flame. Don't let the flame go out. Mm. Don't us, don't, that we're not to come complacent in handling of the gospel. It ought to be as a prize stone jewel that we have in our hands that we are wanting to share and tell people about it. Hallelujah. If that flame and that passion has begun to fade away, may there be a cry from this house Lord, fan the flame. Fan this flame, Lord. Hallelujah. A message that has the power to redeem. A message that has the power to set free. A message that has the power to forgive sins. lays in the hands of the servants of the king. Stir us up, Lord. Stir us up, Lord. Let not that flame kindle down, but burn brighter in this hour than ever. May, be a, may it be a consuming fire that burns within us the power of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you for the calling that you have placed upon us. And I pray for this congregation this afternoon that the Holy Spirit will move mightily that gifts will be stirred up within each one. That boldness, oh Lord, would move within each one. The love for our fellow man. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. I pray for this ministry. Pray for the ministries in our area. Churches, Lord, throughout this nation of ours. Pastors and teachers. Evangelists. Lord, let there be a stirring. Rekindle that flame. Hallelujah. That we may return 
to our first love. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of these men and women have been faithful to the call that you placed upon their life in the midst of adversity, of resistance, Lord, going through seasons of drought, but they have been faithful. Pray, God, that your blessings be upon them. Oh, Lord, stir us up. Hallelujah. Watch over us this week, Lord. Watch over us. And let us be very sensitive to the opportunities that are presented before us. Of people that are hurting. Of people that are struggling. People that are looking for an answer to the problems that they're dealing with. Hallelujah. Let us be sensitive to that. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you this afternoon.